Uh, Welcome, this, Whiskey Balls. Daniel. This I'm Daniel. This is a gift from Sean Sih. How do you pronounce that? Sean Snowson. You magnificent bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Sure. Yeah, so this is one of those ones where I, I sort of feel like the story is a bit of a stretch. Yeah. But whatever. Hmm? The, the story that made it is one we know and love, but it's not their product. So who made it? these guys who own a burger shop, a burger joint called Shorts yeah. um, Burger and Shine in Iowa City. Sure. Right, they are in a location where a famous guy used to have a barber shop. His name was Shorts. Okay. And so when they opened their burger joint, they named it after him. Hmm. And so they referenced that this whiskey is in honor of the barber shop guy who had the barber shop that they turned into a burger joint. That you see what I mean? Yeah. It's a bit of a. It's very inside baseball. You yeah. Gotta, you got to know. Very you gotta inside. Know the scene, the players, the whole thing. And he didn't have anything to do with whiskey. And they tell the whole story, and then they say, he didn't make whiskey, but we think he would like ours. Okay. Oh, maybe, maybe he's making nope. whiskey. Maybe. Sure, why yeah. not? Now, Cedar Ridge, who we know and love. Like, if you are catering to a very animated local scene. Yes. And they know yes. the guy in the barbershop and the history. If you're not trying to scale outside of, we saw this at our own location, yeah. and it's our house, mm -hmm. whiskey. Sure, why not? Very light color. What category are we talking about? Whoa, 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 whoa. Whiskey distilled from a bourbon mash. Okay. So it's a bourbon mash bill yeah. of it, mostly corn, right? I don't yeah. know what it is. Mm -hmm. Made by Cedar Ridge, our friends, the distillery that we actually like, yeah. who is kicking butt right now. Yeah. Um, but aged using Iowa burr oak staves. So Iowa burr oak is a type of oak tree. Sure. And so they cut pieces of of burr oak mm -hmm. and aged it with that. Mm -hmm. So we don't know how old it is at all. Oh uh, man, you got the cherry though. Mm -hmm. You got the cherry, what else? Uh, weirdly, lemon pledge. Oh no, I don't know about that. Lemon yeah. pledge, okay. I was gonna say there's a cream element underneath <laughs> that cherry. Like a cordial almost? Mm hmm Yeah, cherry cordial. I'm still getting lemon. All like right. candy lemon. Like a like a like a lemon drop. Hmm. Right? Sweetened hard candy lemon. Kind yeah. of vanilla cream. Yeah, yeah. There's the cream. Cherry cordial. And it's very light and kind of bright. Yes, it is. Ooh, paper thin. Sweet vanilla with a little bit of a bitter finish. Yeah. Proved it down to 80. Yeah, it's forty percent sweet vanilla with a slightly bitter finish. Yeah. So what the hell is that? I'm looking for something really light. This will do it. Yeah. Like if your choice is like, give me a crown. You'll be probably fine with that. It's got a little more. It's got going um, on in the nose than the, crown. The sweetness is nicer than what I get from a crown. Mm, there's a metallic note to crown that is a little bit off putting. Yeah, I don't get that in here. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. And what else? What else? Going back, I get a little bit more of a cut grass, but it's really slight. It's still being dominated by the densely sweet cordial note. Yeah, and this is a very simple vanilla sugar with a slightly you know bitter bing. tea. I would say that bitter quality is carried tea. with a tea, like I a black tea. Black tea, almost slightly tannic, overly steeped, cherry cordial, a little bit yeah. of vanilla cream. Um, relative, here's the thing. I'm gonna say the word thin, mm -hmm. but thin at 80 proof. <clears throat> it, usually, the, at 80 proof, if you're talking about thin, it becomes watery and ethanol yeah. punchy. I don't bitey. get watery. Like the flavors are there. It doesn't feel like they're stretched out and diluted mm -mm. by a lot of water. They're just thin in terms of. There's not a lot happening. There's not a lot of weight. It is. There's, it is very light. Maybe use the word simple. Okay. It's simple. Hmm. Well, we did find like over three different layers. Yeah, but three. Of they're and it's not layers, it's it's variations on the theme. Okay. It's sides of the same thing. I feel like we're getting one note that presents just slightly different, three different directions, but not three truly distinct notes. That said, I would love to see this at a higher proof. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not watery. 
it is a little bit too, using your word, okay, simple. Mm -hmm. But those flavors, turning the volume up, I think it could be really nice. But we've had Cedar Ridge. Mm -hmm. I think we know what those flavors are. And they're really nice. And Cedar Ridge makes a good whiskey. Yeah. So John Barr, what, why do you call the one trash titan? Why oh, yeah. do you call the one trash titan? Why trash titan? What do we call, why do we call people trash titan instead of titan? Because titan was supposed to be the end game for all tiers. Once you achieve that, there's no higher. There's no higher, and then people kept sending him whiskeys. Yeah. It's like, well, how? It got out of control. Right. How do we punish them for their generosity? And we just make it a trash, trash titan. titan. Yeah, trash titan. Yeah, that was yeah. how he did it. Yeah. <laughs> we have Michael Keaty. I don't understand bottled in bond. Hunter proof hmm. whiskey. Can you explain? Bottle and bond. Yes. So, back in the day, a mm -hmm. little bit of a little history for the history nerds. We haven't done this in a while. Right. Back in the day, uh, there was nothing to prevent what was called rectifiers from creating something to mimic whiskey and then selling it as whiskey. Yeah. And uh, there were people who were buying barrels and then, you know, creating their own bottled product and mm -hmm. they were fine. They were you know, just proofing it down or doing normal things to it. And then there were people who were outright lying and taking like vodka and adding flavoring and all this kind of shit to it and then selling it as whiskey. And the actual whiskey producers, um, like the original, the OGs, the old Forrester type crew, they wanted to fight that. And so in the late 1800s, they got involved and managed to get a law passed with, I think it was, was it Taft? That uh, created the Bottled in Bond Act where you could call something bottled in bond if it was the same distillery, the same season, the same distiller, and 100 proof, and, and then it had um, the tax, the bottled in bond stamp. It actually had a picture of the dude who approved it mm -hmm. on it. And they were the only ones who allowed to sell bottled in bond whiskey, and it was meant to separate them from the frauds and the bullshit artists. And that's where the term, now these days, there's a lot more laws around whiskey. Yeah. And so it's sort of uh, redundant because the things rectifiers were doing, they won't let you call that whiskey anymore. Right. So it's unnecessary, but it's a cool historical throwback to the first time in history when the government helped actually kick out the frauds, yeah. not just add a layer of uh, bullshit. And it sounds cool. Can I say something a little bit cynical? Bottled in bond. I'm usually, I'm usually not cynical, uh, but I'm gonna say something that's pretty cynical. I'm not. Go go. First, first of all, let's talk about. I was the one. How am I not cynical? I don't know. I don't. Delightful. Is the it was word. just a funnier reaction. Delightful is the word. Uh, bottle and bond. It sounds cool, and in conversations I've seen with human beings mm -hmm. talking about bottle and bond, it's often with somebody who doesn't really know what it means, but they hear, you know, this is bottle and bond. Oh, oh, it's fancy. Oh, yeah. They don't know what it is, but it's yeah. like, well, this sounds like it's a special thing, and that's really what a lot of people are looking for right. when it comes to whiskey. They want it to be special. Yeah. Yeah. And people come and they hang out. It's like, what can you pour me that's like, like special? Like what's the good stuff? What's the interesting? They want some backstory. They want some context. Yeah. They want some, they want a story they can tell their friends. Right. Yeah. And bottled and bond is one of these words you can say and people go, oh, bottled and bond. Yeah. I was on a call with, yeah. uh, with um, Jared. Oh, and irony is going back. Yeah. Bottled and bond meant it was bottled under the supervision of a government warehouse. Which just meant like Ugh. the government was like, yes, this is legitimate whiskey. Right. And that separated it from the frauds, right? right, right. right? Well, now all warehouses are governed by that. So yeah. all whiskey in the U.S., period, yeah. is, bo is bonded whiskey, mm -hmm. right? So anyway, but Jared, I was on a call with a bunch of people and Jared from Balconis was on it. Mm -hmm. And they just released a bottled and bond corn whiskey mm -hmm. finished in tequila barrels. Yeah, you right? were saying that. It's like... Um, yeah, it's... It? Big baby or Incredible. something? Incredible. Big, which is great. You know, you big baby. Because <laughs> their, their corn whiskey is baby blue yeah. and true blue. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So it's big baby. It's four years old, 100 proof, finished in tequila casks. Yep. And they were in the midst of re like getting ready to release it. It was sort of Gabe's brainchild. Mm -hmm. And it's the first one that has his signature on it instead of Jared's. Yeah. Right? Which is pretty cool. Yeah. And, um, and he was like, you realize that this thing we're about to release is bottled in bond. Mm. Like by accident, yeah. Like just the barrels they chose to release it. Yeah. It's all it's bottled in bond, and they're like, "Can we? Should we put that on the bottle?" Yeah. It's like this will be the first bottled in bond product ever to come out of Balconis. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ever. It's an accident. And it's an accident, and it's a tequila finished corn whiskey that is not anywhere near their normal flavor profiles for anything they've ever made. Yeah, yeah. 
and they just sort of like threw away bottled in bond yeah. with that sure why not put it on yeah, the bottle yeah, slap it on slap <laughs> yeah, it. yeah wait, wait, wait. <laughs> uh the more i live with this the vanilla cream holds on the nose mm -hmm. the cherry cordial holds on the taste but it is simple uh, simple at that you know that low proof there yeah Meh. i don't hate it but i think it would be really nicer to higher proof boring i yeah. think yeah it, it's but not disappointing it's very Just very meh. very familiar yeah. you've had those flavors many times before. The Whiskey Goth. Mm. Tea tree oil has oh. always had an astringent smell, almost, okay. almost medicinal. Whole also smelling strongly, uh, whole, wow. oh, wild, wow. yeah, the type of, okay. Also smelling strongly of mint and green tea. Yeah, yeah, so we need to get some tea tree oil yeah, yeah. so we can use as rem because I think those notes she just described, mm. mint and green we've tea gotten and in whiskeys for four years. Sure, yeah. yeah. So yeah. that might become my new go-to Tasting note. <laughs> if I have a bottle of tea tree, tea tree oil. oil. Yes, yes, it's tea tree oil. You do, you do realize, if we don't have the reference point, it's yeah. not going to be very helpful for anybody. It doesn't matter, I'll make it sound fancy, yes. which is the only goal of tasting. Of course, of course. Yeah. Everybody but uh, Josh Natal. No, wait, I No, no, it. Whiskey Goth. Yeah, Whiskey Goth. Yeah, she, she yeah, knows. She appreciates it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, that's a thing that you can drink if you want to. Here's the fighting, steal, get drinking. If you fight me, I fight for a friend. You steal, may you steal your livers. And if you drink, May you drink with us.